Hey folks, welcome to episode 18 of the Make Music Income podcast. And our episode today is entitled, Don't Be So Precious With Your Music. And that might sound a little pointed, but we are serious about what we're talking about today because we see this happening a lot in our Discord and we see it with different people that we talk to. So it's true. Say hello, Stevie, and why don't you tell us a little bit about your week this week? What's been going on? Hello, friends. Uh, I'm trying to not I'm trying to project here because if I speak on this tone, you can hear that my voice is a little raspy, and that's because I played a show on what last Saturday uh, with the band, um, and I did a lot of Sprinkle. screaming and yelling. Yeah, <laughs> it was Good. loud. It was loud uh, nice. in there, but it was so much fun because. Like I mentioned uh, last podcast, the dancing is back in Vancouver. Yes, we can dance again once so, again in Vancouver. Yeah, so <laughs> we are allowed to dance. People were, the energy we got from the crowd was just totally overwhelming. Everyone was just having the best time. Everyone was dancing and partying and, um, and we had so much fun. And I probably drank a couple too many beers and uh, yeah, I feel great. So uh, <laughs> other than that, uh, I've had a good week, man. The um, the downloads on Motion Array are doing really well this month. I've got uh, past a th I've just passed a thousand downloads, um, so level six, and uh, the yeah the income's just a, a little over five hundred now. So um, nice to see things are kind of picking up there. Hopefully that's a sign of better things to come throughout the year. And um, the thing that's been occupying most of my time since last we talked. <clears throat> is just finishing up this next lo-fi hip-hop album that I'm about to send to Artlist. Uh, Artlist is also doing well. I've just passed 50, or I'm just about to hit 50,000 downloads uh, on Artlist. And um, I'm... For, for this year? Uh, for since I've joined. So like last, about it's been about a year since I've been on there. Um, that's 13 tracks um, total. And uh, I'm hoping to double that this this year uh, this is going to be the first of you know maybe two or three albums that i'll send them this year can you are you able to see your downloads from just this year so far from can just you... this year no I, I don't think so or i have to check the, the back end i can't I, that'd I can't be remember. helpful because then you could compare it to where you were last year how many right. downloads you had and how much you got paid and you could extrapolate all that out yeah, well, mm -hmm. as soon as you put an a, a, an album out to Artlist, the the downloads spike immediately because yeah. they kind of they kind of just promote it a little bit, and then the, it it kind of goes down and down and down over over time. Um, so now I'm at you know uh, about fifty to hundred downloads a day, uh, whereas when you put something out, it's like you know it's like at one point it was like five hundred downloads a day. It was it was huge. So you got to keep feeding um, the beast there. Uh, and I've been working on a on an album that's about nine tracks. Uh, I just featured one of the, the tracks. Um, I kind of opened up the session to the Academy members. Released that yesterday is one of the tracks that features uh, my vocals. Um, and I was a little shy about uh, putting it out there, but I'm glad I did it. It was it was an interesting challenge for me to do it. I recorded my my friend Missy as well, who's like a, a vocalist. And she helped me out on that track. Um, so that's a lot of fun. And I'm just putting the finishing touches on um, that album. And I'm trying not to be too precious about it uh, <laughs> i am feeling a little obsessive about all of like the the tiny details getting the mix right and everything but uh, i am trying uh, my hardest not to uh get too uh, obsessed with it uh before i put it out but i am you know uh, i'm feeling really good about it overall i feel like it's a step up from the last two albums yeah. that i gave them so um that's been happening and uh, i think that's that's it for me oh yeah i recorded um i or i sampled my first uh, instrument. I built my first uh, contact instrument. I haven't uh, shown anybody yet. I'm still kind of working on it, but uh, I was in a studio um, just briefly last week and I brought my two little pencil condensers and uh, I sampled uh, an upright uh, piano there. And nice. yeah, I'm kind of messing with it. I, I, I'm also, I used, I, rec I used a serum and uh, b built like a kind of like a piano like patch with yeah. serum. That's kind of, it's, so it's going to be a kind of a, a hybrid between uh, this serum patch and like a real felt um, piano and it sounded pretty cool I actually used it in one of my own tracks like a, like a hip-hop track that I'm working on 
and it sounds pretty cool. So I'm, I'm definitely going to put it out there and I'm going to submit it to uh, Piano Book and nice. let the community um, you know, be the judge of how well I did. I mean, it's, it's a first time for me, so, um, it, it's not, um, it's not incredible, but it, it, it was really fun to do it. And it's really cool to kind of like dig into the back end of, of contact and, and sort of figure out how things work, um, yeah. with, with the contact engine. It's pretty cool, man. So, uh, that was exciting. Am, that, that's, that's on my list. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really fun. Um, uh, and yeah, that's my week. That's been my week so far. How about you? Well, that's absolutely on my list for 2022 is to sample my um, my grand in there. Mm. I would assume that you don't have to worry about tuning because you could fix up the samples. You can fix you can well you can yeah you can tune can the you samples tune them up? if you want yeah. Um, I didn't bother doing that. Um, mostly that the, the the struggle for me was was playing the the keys at the same velocity so that when yeah. they, you bring them into contact, they, one doesn't sound louder than the other. So you kind of have to manage that. But uh, yeah. One of my keyboard dudes in Nashville, his name is um, Blair Masters. He's pretty well known in Nashville, and he's actually on tour right now with Garth Brooks as keyboard player. Mm. But um, yeah, so he's a big deal guy, but uh, cool. super sweet, nice guy. And he has, I've been over to his studio a lot, and he's got a, a, a Yamaha uh, Grand with the MIDI built in, and the MIDI works oh, nice. both ways. Oh, really? It, I was just can, thinking about that the other day. I was like, it'd be so cool if I could like reverse MIDI and play it into a real piano. That's so it cool. It does. It, That's it, so it cool. plays, he can have MIDI play the piano yeah. and it actually hits the hammers. It actually uses the hammers and, and mechanically works that way. So he was able That's to cool. do a piano, uh, sample his entire Yamaha piano at something crazy, like 16 different dynamic levels. Um, but oh, it was done cool. by computer, so it wasn't him doing it as a human. The the uh, logic or whatever he used did each one, and he sampled every note, all eighty eight keys at sixteen different uh, velocity That's levels. That's so cool. So so um, is it a, is it, it an upright or is it a grand? It's a grand. It's a it's a uh, Yamaha beautiful grand uh, concert grand piano, and. Uh, they're they're expensive these, these pianos, but yeah. uh, he uses it for a lot of his work and uh, and he, he sold this so he sold this to some library this uh, piano thing for a long time he just gave it to all of us to use and so everybody in town was using this piano as like a a sample a sampled piano but that's yeah cool. he did that but I'd like to sample my family um, grant that's been passed down from my father to me it's a Kauai and uh, it was modified slightly about 10 years ago by a piano guy that I know who put, sprayed something on the hammers to make them a little bit more um, solid and not so, because it used to be really dark and now it's, it's a little brighter. So it's unique and it's, and it's a baby grand kawaii, mm -hmm. but it's got a nice sound and it's even better now that it's a little brighter, preferably for me. Cool. But uh, I don't use it much for recording, so it would be really neat to sample it and have it available for certain types of projects, you know, and for piano book and things like that. I'd like to try that. Yeah, yeah. So awesome. uh, my week this week so far has been, uh, I spent a lot of time editing that Audio Sparks video that I just put out that's on the channel, and I'll go ahead and just point with my left hand, and, and it'll be up on the channel. Uh, well, it won't matter because you're editing this, but... Uh, well, no, I can take it and make a, a card out of that. So yeah. I'll put it on uh, the thing below. But it it's really an in-depth uh, video about audio sparks, a little more in-depth than maybe some people would want. But um, I have found those that people like that. Uh, over time, people like different people want to know different things about it. And so hopefully this kind of gives them a, a, a pretty deep it's a 24 minute video. So, uh, it's, it's going to be one of those videos that people find and, uh, it's doing pretty well. I mean, it's, it's very, it's pretty middle of the road on my last 10 videos, but I think over time it'll be one of those videos that gets a lot just because when you put something out about, as you know, when you put something out about a certain kind of library or certain review of certain thing, they just mm -hmm. climb over time. So, yeah. uh, but that took a long time to edit. Um, and then I just did a live that you were part of called The Real Truth of Making a Living in Music or Making Music as You're Living. Sorry and to so spam that, your uh, your comment section there. With, that was uh, interesting. That was fine. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm glad to have you in there. And 
uh, <laughs> a nice turnout again, around yeah. close to 30 people at a time. Uh, but uh, more than that, because I guess people come and go, right? Yeah, those they do, things. Yeah. So um, I've been really working on Easter hymns and continue to write one. I just did a really cool one yesterday that's going to turn out. I think it's going to go. I've been working on an album for a couple of years called Ambient Gospel. And it's just like really spooky versions of hymns, like church hymns. And this one cool. has turned out that way. It almost needs like some low singer singing it, you know, type of thing. But it's it's uh, it's really <laughs> cool. And I, 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 I just kind of put down the first versions of it yesterday. But um, and then I've got another piano one to do. And then I'm done with Easter hymns. I'll be done after that. S- speaking I've of Easter we, uh, I bought a few uh, Cadbury eggs yesterday. They, actually, <laughs> they finally started selling them at the grocery store down below. And um, did you see they were it? smaller? Yeah, oh, they're much smaller. Yeah, but it, the here's the the good news about them being smaller. At least they're fresh. So you know these aren't recycled <laughs> from last year. That's you know. true. <laughs> so you know some store didn't yeah. just stock them away and say, hey, we'll put them out next yeah, year. You yeah, know? Yeah. At least you know that since they're – that's why I love when you get a, a – Snickers puts out new designs on their packages or you whatever. You know it's fresh. Like, hey, at least I'm getting a fresher one here. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm done with Easter hymns. Uh, I have been doing some interviews with some local um, music production colleges and uh so that's continues we'll see what what if that becomes a music income as i just talked about in my in my uh live video today it's all about finding those music incomes it doesn't matter what they are doesn't matter if they're big ones like this would be a bigger income because it's more of a part or full-time type of job mm-hmm. versus stock music where it's just a smaller income right mm-hmm. or a, a gig night where you get paid hundred bucks, 200 bucks or something like that. But, um, it, it could be not only a bigger music income, but a consistent one, which is an important thing, especially for me right now. I'd love to have a little bit more consistency. Um, I am continuing my pond five and audio jungle experiment. Um, I don't want to say too much about it to ruin it, but let's just say more, okay. more, more sales, more, or more. That's, uh, all I'm gonna, that's all I'm going to say. More, more. downloads. <laughs> I'm just going to say more for now. It, I'm, n- next week I'm going live with, uh, I don't know what I'm going to call it yet, but I might call it the great, the great cheapo or the great race to the bottom experiment. Hope, hopefully it's not, hopefully when you say more, it's just not more disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> well, well that keep us in I, I think that goes along with it in general, <laughs> but uh I, I more I think grief. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more not money. Um, yeah. uh, also, I had the first inklings of a thought. We talked about another music business I was before I talked, but this isn't it. I had my first thoughts of possibly starting my own music library, starting my own stock library you know sure i, I always think thoughts. about this when we talk when i read the discord comments i'm like all the composers in here could probably put together a pretty amazing stock library you know yeah we just need, but we just need someone just to run the uh, the, I mean, the 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 tech we just need some, almost, uh, a developer to make the site yeah i think the difference with me is that i have i have so many genres you know i work in in dozens of genres not just like four or five and and i think people like yourself do really well on motion <clears throat> array mainly because you concentrate on on specific genres that are popular in stock music and as i talked about the first of the year that was kind of my goal but i just can't i can't get there because i like easter comes along and i got to do all these easter things and all these hymns come out you know and by the way hymns continue to be my biggest seller on across all platforms across all libraries just saying anyway but I, I i just think that there is um there's just something more for me in, in in creating a library because i could offer so many different genres um and uh well what, let's as, let's like can you be more specific like what do you mean by create a library like you're gonna uh like I start a, like a separate website a separate website and a library or it might be on the from the moment music site and it's only know? gonna be your music and it's only going to be my music. Yeah. So kind of like we have a couple people that are doing that in the in the Discord already. Um, 
Brian was his name. I think. Yeah, Brian, Brian Jig. Uh, he's doing that, and then we we were. I was I was talking to. Um, uh, oh yeah, well we have Lester um, who's doing it as well. Um, so that so that Someone requires else was talking about it. Pardon today. me. Today, Andy was Andy talking about it. Somebody else was talking about maybe, it today. Maybe it's definitely been brought up like several times because it's a, it's at a the very interesting least. idea. I think it just it's it's just one of those things that requ- you need, like you need like the someone to kind of unless you have the I mean you have web developing experience, but it's like mm-hmm. it requires like a pretty. Um, intense setup in terms of like uh like you couldn't just like put that together using like a uh you couldn't do it easily um well you know. i think you could do it easily well, and the easy way know. is just to offer free ones for people who will not monetize it you know what i mean that, that's the first easy step just to say it's all available for you to download here and uh you can use it in your productions as long as you don't monetize it on youtube Right. That's well, the first step. Well, that's the that's the, yeah, that's the easy part. But then if you're selling licenses and stuff like that, and you got to sell, then hey, you got to set up some license, e-commerce. They'll just have to contact me personally at first. I mean, it's not going to be that much at first. So I can send them a PayPal link, and they can pay it and move on with their life. You know, and uh, but yeah, then you get into how do you are you going to go in and whitelist things and all that kind of stuff. So I think for now the the thoughts would be more on the free side. It once we find out, you and I both we should find out right about the same time of what is Content ID going to do for us. Is it going to bring income or not? We should know that in the next couple months, right? That what we will see at Content ID and is it enough to justify giving songs away for free to be used in Content ID? so that we get paid in the back end. And if that becomes a thing, then really how much we sell things for it, Pon5, Audio Jungle, Motion Array, all that doesn't matter anymore, you know? Yeah, well, yeah, it's it's definitely like we're kind of both patiently waiting to find out how well <laughs> uh, Content ID does. And and like what's, it's going to take, what, three or a, a couple months or something like that? From what I understand, understand, it's a two-month delay to find out what it's doing. Right. And then you get paid the month after the end of the first quarter. So Mm -hmm. I would think we would be looking at the end of April of seeing first payments for whatever first quarter had. Yeah. Something like that. Because right now, this is nothing's showing up on on Identify, right? So, um, yeah, it's a a really interesting experiment. I think that, you know, there's a lot of different ways that you could go about getting that music out to people for free. For free, I'm not sure that you know building a website is is where I would spend my time. It, it might it might be the right move. I mean, but like I think that you see a lot of people giving it away on YouTube, um, you know, that as as a kind of way to promote it as well. Um, but I think that if you were ever to get to, to a point where you had the option to say like license the track as well, like kind of like Lester's doing, like you have option A, which is take for free and don't monetize, or uh, option B, which is license and, and pay it out, then you'd probably want a website. Um, but I mean, yeah, creating the website well, is just so much work in, a, in and I of itself. Have a, I have a site that's that's only focused on stock, my stock music, which is from the moment music.com. And that's what I use for, across all my libraries is from the moment music. And so I kind of have the, the home site built already. So if I wanted to make a page where they could just download anything they wanted to and agreed not to monetize it. Um, to me, again, stock music is, talk about not being precious about something. Uh, stock music is something I am not at all precious about. Mm-hmm. And um, before we get into that, I'll just say the only other thing I've been working on this week is I have made some progress on my uh, BMG country album, uh, my country album for my BMG library, and uh, got some vocals happening this week on it, got some uh, new guitars back on it, some final mandolin and different things we needed for it. Nice. So getting that really uh, to the point where I can get all the vocals back and start to go through the final procedures of pitching that to the library and him a taking it and signing the contract and all that kind of stuff. So that's a big that's a big deal because you know when you have like your lo-fi album right now, you got to get it done to move on to the next thing. And that. yeah. <laughs> I'm trying and, to make and way this for other things. Been on my plate for 
six months and I'm ready for it. I mean, country is not my first choice of what I want to be producing all the mm. time. Yeah. And I have lots of other things I want to get to. So, all right. So speaking, uh, so yeah, in some ways the country album is precious. The only reason it, it's precious to me is because um, I, I know that a library is going to take it and put it in their library. And I know that this library told me they need country music and in, in their particular mix of things because they just don't have that and they want to be able to have that. So uh, for me, it's important to get that done and uh, I have to be pretty on it. I have to be pretty careful about it. I have to be intentional about it. <clears throat> and I, and I, I, worry is not the right word. We're going to get to worry when we talk about this because a lot of people worry unnecessarily about minor things with all their music. And that's part of what we want to talk about today. So let's get to that now. What, how to not be so precious about your music. Don't be so precious with your music. And first, let's define kind of what that is. I was just talking about it. But by precious, what we usually mean is people are just so freaked out about every single song they have and that every one of their babies has to be used and 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 uh, monetized the right way and it and they worry and they fear if they should sign this deal or if they should do this little thing they worry about every little thing regarding that song versus what they should be doing which is finishing it kicking it out the door like you do your kids and say go live a life on your own and make me some money because <laughs> <laughs> you're my slave get out there and make me some money i got other kids to make and then getting <laughs> back to the wife and, and getting busy no i'm just kidding um but that's that's really a, a terrible analogy for for saying you know you need to get these things done you need to write uh, sign off Put it out and move on to the next thing and not be so precious and worry about, oh, is what's this? I, I, should I sign this deal with this with this song? Now, you should be careful with your deals, but there's just so much preciousness going on like, oh, I've got this song and it's my best song. And uh, I've got a lot of examples I'm going to talk about here in a minute. But that's that's kind of what at least how I see this. How do you see being precious with your songs? Yeah, well, it's interesting that you bring up the like the like the the deals and the and like the the putting it out there in the right libraries kind of aspect of it because um, that is definitely one uh, you know one important thing to to consider. The other is like the, on the production side, you know, just being uh, too precious or or and I mean I think this conversation should be like what's what are like the right things to worry about, you know? Okay. Um, we can get that last maybe. Pardon me. We can hit that last. Yeah, maybe yeah, yeah, exactly. Because I, I think that, like, like you said, you know, we just talking with people in the Discord, for example, you see a lot of, um, uh, you see a lot of people being precious about about stuff and maybe um, being the biggest bottleneck in their own process of like actually getting stuff out there and 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 being productive, and um, it's a fine line, right? Because you don't want to like you you don't want to like the, you want to be precious about some things or you want to be careful uh and attentive to some things in the production process uh however you don't want to be that person that only puts out like you know like a handful of tracks in an entire year you know so it like and, and get nothing done um i feel like the we see more people being um there's kind of two different types of, of, of producers there's, there's people who who put stuff out there kind of like without being precious enough sometimes. That's true. And yeah. then there's other people who are like very, very kind of like meticulous about the process. Like they're obsessive and um, they're perfectionist and, and they just don't get like, you know, a lot of stuff out there at all. So you have those two extremes and I feel as though, I don't know if you agree with this, but I feel as though most people kind of tend to fall on that, uh, on that perfectionist side, including myself um, and don't get as much out there as we as we'd like. Um, I feel like that is a more common disposition rather than than being the the people who just put stuff out maybe like a little bit too much and like aren't thinking about some That's of those. That's probably things. me. I probably fall on the first side. I I probably crank out hmm. and do and probably don't 
take as much care as I should sometimes mm. with what I've put in. And, and I think that's one reason why, while my income is something from, from stock, and I'm thankful for it, yeah. um, there's a couple reasons why it's not to the level of other people. And that's because I just don't, I probably don't spend enough time on it. Or I only put out what I want, even though I know what people really need on those libraries. I still just do whatever the heck I feel like doing. I'm going to do a bunch of Easter songs. They're going to be very usable over the next week, two weeks, or maybe three weeks, you know, till Easter. And then they're not going to be usable the rest of the year in that library. I will get more sales and more downloads for those songs, maybe for churches and things, because they're all religious songs. But, uh, shoot, I, I just had a Halloween song sold on Pond 5 <laughs> yesterday. Or the other day. Weird. And I'm thinking, <laughs> someone's thinking I, ahead. Why are you downloading this now? I, yeah. Uh, for, it, for me, I think it's like, uh, I, I just, I want to like, I want to listen to my albums like, you know, at some point in the future and chronologically on Spotify and on Artlist or wherever I'm putting out. And I want to say, I want to hear them get progressively better and better and better. I'm always looking to outdo myself in the last thing that I put out. Um, and that requires uh, time and, uh, and and extra effort. Um, so that's me being precious, but I think it's being precious in the right way because ultimately, um, you know, I'm not. At the, there's a point at which I, you know, draw the line and I say, hey, look, you got to get these out there. You may not feel like they're they're completely finished. And I always kind of get that sense in the back of my in my head. I'm just like, ah, this isn't done. There's more that I could do. I always feel that way, but you have to push past that in order to get things done. Um, and you can, you can take that little, like, you know, nagging, uh, voice in the back of your head saying, this is, isn't quite as good as it could be. And you could take that and put it, put that onto your next track. <laughs> um, and I you know, wonder so if that's a, if that's an age thing, because I think where I am in my career, I'm like, uh, when I get done with something, I'm happy with it. I'm not saying that I'm putting things out I'm not happy with because I rushed through it. I'm saying that it's good enough. It's good enough. And my quality, I trust to be good. In other words, I've got past the place where I look back in 10 years ago. Oh, I could have done so much better than that. You know, now when I look back at my stuff pre Nashville, a lot of times, not everything, but a lot of things, I'll go, oh, Dude, I could have done it so much better if I'd had the players I have now. Yeah. If I was, if I was, if I was a better player, or if I had thought like I do now when I think. But I don't think that in ten years I'll look back at anything I've created for stock or anything and go, I could have done that better. I don't think I will. I, I've reached. I'm not saying I'm the, I'm at the pinnacle of all producing. I'm just saying I'm at the pinnacle for me. I, I'm. I everything I finish nowadays. Um, there are some things I do for clients that just don't turn out well just because of the budget or because of the client's voice or or whatever. There are the occasional songs that sounded better on paper than they turned out to be when once we recorded them or whatever that are mine. But uh, a lot of the most of the stuff I make for stock, I listen to it years later and I'm super happy with it. And I think I will be now. I don't think that was the case. And it's mainly because of the quality of samples I have that I didn't have when I was your age. Mm -hmm. When I was in my, uh, you know, when I was just starting, I don't know, when I was in my, let's say, um, when I just got married and all I had was, let's say, a, 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 a keyboard that had a sequencer on it. You right. know? And it didn't even have great drums or bass sounds or whatever. I had very limited sounds. When I look back, it's mostly due to the equipment that I had and the sounds that I had and how limited they were. Now I'm not limited by that anymore. You know, with logic alone, I'm not limited by that anymore. Yeah, there's, but, very, there's very little in way of limitation in terms of like what you can accomplish with uh, even like a modest production, you know, setup <laughs> these days. So one reason why I'm not so precious is I get to make whatever I make and, and I won't. If I don't like it, sometimes I might have gone, eh, that wasn't that interesting, but it sounds fine. I, you know? I regularly put things out there that I'm I'm not 
totally stoked on this. And this applies to more than just music. This is like YouTube videos and stuff like that too. Like a lot of the videos I put yeah. out there, I'm just like, man, yeah. this isn't that good. Or it's just like, you, you know, it's, it, it's not as good as it could be or, or whatever, but you have to just push, you have to forge ahead, man. Or else, yeah. otherwise nothing gets done. Like music is one, you know, can of worms. But like when I started doing YouTube videos, like the first video that I, the very first video that I, I put out, I remember just like, <laughs> like, I think I re-recorded it like five times because I wasn't used to seeing myself on, on, uh, on video and hearing myself talk. Like it wasn't, I just wasn't used to it. And I was like, oh my God, it's terrible. It's terrible. And I redid <laughs> it time and time again until I'm just like, what am I doing? Just put it out there. And yeah. there's so many videos, like I actually... You know, like look back at some of my earlier videos on it, and, and they they truly just feel embarrassing to to listen to see it and hear it in in a way that's just personal to me. I'm just like, oh my, oh my god, it's 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 embarrassing. But man, it, it, you gotta f just you just gotta move past that feeling. Um, otherwise, nothing ever gets done. That's the problem. You never learn. You have to learn from your you know the the mistakes and and the, you know I. All the music that I put out, and like you know, on uh, on stock, I listen to it, and uh, I'm I'm proud of all of it. You know, like even the stuff yeah. that I, I don't like, I'm proud of it. I'm I'm proud of it because I put it out there, um, and 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 did it anyway. And you know, that's 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 what progress looks like. It's like you have to allow yourself to suck at you know at first, or you have to allow yourself to not um, you know love all the things that you put out there, uh, but they are what they are. And they're, they're a timestamp and you can say to yourself, Hey, well, at least I've made progress from that point, you know? Yeah. I think some of my stock stuff is stuff that was recorded in a wanky way. Either I mm. like some of the stuff that I did from my classical masters stuff, right. I recorded that the best I could based on the equipment that I had and the, and the school had. And uh, some of it I recorded in a church with a, you know, I took a mic and a interface and, I may have taken an iPad to record it or something like that. So, you know, and I was recording violin and flute and I'm not even sure they were recorded as good as they could have been by a, an engineer in a studio that I would do in Nashville or something. But you know what? They were all out. They were all accepted by the libraries. If they're accepted yeah. by Motion Array, I can't say that it stinks, you know, because... No, it, and it doesn't stink. It doesn't. And it's only your standards, right? That, yeah. like, you know, yeah. it's like, no, it's not like people are listening to this and like, this stinks, you know? It's like, it's yeah. only you that, like, has this yeah, voice in your great. head, this yeah, narrative. You're, because you're, you're, again, you're so precious and you want to make sure that mm -hmm. you don't make any mistakes. You don't put out anything that anybody is going to... You, you don't want to worry that someone's going to, you know, it's that whole imposter syndrome thing. Are they going to realize I'm not really that great? Mm -hmm. Are they going to, are they going to realize that I don't, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just putting this stuff together. I'm just completely making stuff up as I go along, finding sounds as I find them, <laughs> totally. finding free things and, and, and stumbling upon something that sounds like I'm a genius, but I just found <laughs> it on logic or something, you know? Yeah. And it's like that thing I did for, uh, you know, with all the strings and logic. I I had no idea all those articulations were in there, and now it sounds awesome because I have I lucked into finding uh, that 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 it had all those things. Um, yeah, yeah. So, and a lot of the things that I create are like that. So. I want to talk about a few stories from artists and songwriters and composers that I see all the time, and you can comment on these and see what you think about these. But okay. like one is a, a story about an artist just last, just this year or last year who came to me and said, dude, I, I got in touch with you like 10 years ago. Do you remember me? And I was like, yeah, I remember you. I kind of remember. And he's like, I remember that song I had so-and-so blah, blah, blah. I was like, yeah, I think. And he goes, well, here it is. And he attached it and he says that, I'm really excited. Um, I've redone this song. Okay. And, and I, I want to know what you think about it. Uh -huh. And I'm like, dude, it's been 10 years. <laughs> been this is the song years. you want to show me? He's been <laughs> so preciously focused on that song for <clears throat> 10 years at the expense of writing any other music. 10 years now he's probably <laughs> written awesome. other songs but that was the one he chose to show a music professional that he wanted their advice from and and to it's me kind, it's that kind just... of admirable in a way to work <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool so. 
<laughs> it's like when so. Axel Rose was working on like Chinese democracy for like <laughs> what was it like six or seven years or something like that. It's holed up in the studio hey, and he finally puts it out. <laughs> it's like I uh, literally put a record out on my birthday a few years ago called uh, Sand Dollar in My Suitcase. It's a Latin uh, jazz record that I, I started developing in 2008 and I put it out like like in 2020 or 2019 or something like that. So it took me 11 years to get it done, but yeah. that's because it was a back burner project along with all my other work. And um, and I kept messing around and, and fooling with it and leaving it alone for months and stuff like that. So I, I get it a little bit. And I was very precious with those songs because I wanted them to come out. And even when I was ready to release them, uh, it was 2020 because I couldn't call it the album was called Welcome to Florida was going to be the name of the album. And then that was like one of the very first songs I wrote for it. And it's all songs that really kind of can relate to a Florida city of some kind. But um, it was 2020. It was in the middle of COVID. Florida was closed, mm. literally closed. People could not come across the state lines. And I was releasing this album on my birthday on August of 2020, and nobody could come to Florida. <laughs> so I couldn't call the Seems album like the right time for a release. <laughs> <laughs> so I end up renaming it to another song on the album. But uh, I, I, I eventually became unprecious and said, this has to be released. And now, by the way, it's signed to my BMG library and will be releasing soon. So that's pretty cool. But... All that to say, well, I yeah, that's not, I can understand not totally to being point. precious, right? Like, you, yeah, like you know, I I see, I see what you're saying there, but it's not exactly the same thing because you had like other things that you were working on. It was just you yeah. hadn't found the right time to kind of like put the finishing touches on that piece of work. Um, but it's not like you were uh, you weren't occupied with other things in the meantime. Yeah. And I think I think that yeah, that maybe is a, a kind of like an important uh, different. And you know, I, I thing know that other have people have jobs. Like, I know they do other things other than music. Some of the, like this guy, he probably has a real job and yeah, he yeah. doesn't have time to do a lot of music. But ten years, and one song. So uh, another one that I've heard for the past thirty years from artists, especially, or I should say, songwriters that come see me, is the fact that they are so concerned that someone is going to steal their song that they can't show anyone. They, they, they want you to sign. I've had people ask me to sign an NDA before. Um, this is a, this songs. is a good topic to talk about. This is a good topic to talk about. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I, it's, it's like, um, it, yeah, it's so funny. Go ahead. Go ahead. Finish your, what you're going to say. Well, they say, should I have it copyrighted before I bring it to town and show <laughs> yeah. you in Nashville or whenever they, or, or send it to you through the email? Should I, should I, um, should I get it copyrighted? Should I sign it with BMI? What, sh you know, should I send it to myself in the mail? You know, all the <laughs> yeah, stuff. Right, right. And so should I, you know, they're so concerned that you, that their song is going to be heard and someone's going to steal it as if their song is the only song mm -hmm. it, that it, it exists in the universe and it's precious like gold and no one's ever written anything like it that it, it's going to be stole. And stolen and so uh that's another form of preciousness it, I kind the, of think. The, the best way to is it, it's really funny because we, we all live in our own heads right you know and 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 we're and, and there's this tendency to to think that like the the world like you know like kind of revolves around what we're doing because it's like we live our whole lives in our in our minds and our in our bodies and like it, yeah. it's hard to be objective about things sometimes the the best way to and like I, I think back to um i think back a lot to the hesitations that i had about starting the youtube channel and like seeing myself on camera and like being kind of just like you know freaked out by the idea of like my you know my talking head being on youtube and being public you know and i and i remember you, you know coming to realize that no one cares <laughs> and it's great that's, and that's the best way to, to, to combat those feelings of like self-consciousness and um, it, it's just remembering that no one cares. No one yeah. cares and about no cares. and if you embarrass yourself, no one cares. People might you might it might be embarrassing for a second, but that you know a minute later, no one remembers, no one cares. It's all good. you know So like those, those feelings that you have about um, you know the people stealing your songs stuff. It's like one of a billion songs being. Yeah, I don't. I don't think people realize 
that the people they are approaching won't remember their song a half hour after they're gone uh, in most cases. And it's not that they're, they're mean. It's not that they're awful people. It's just that they hear so many songs in one day, much less yeah. um, uh, need, you know, are going to think, oh, thank goodness a song has come in that I can use and now make my fortune. Yeah. Um, what they don't realize is that you're a songwriter. And, and I'm, you know, when they would come see me, I'm like, listen, I have literally hundreds that I don't, uh, have time to do something with. Why do I need one of yours? And so I, one of my things is to talk to them about, listen, uh, if, and, and my, so my, my thought was always the same. If you're concerned, copyright it before you show somebody. Yeah. Go do, do, it, it. do it. If it makes you feel better. If it know? makes you feel better, copyright and, it. With and the it's, copyright not like, office, it's not like, it's not like music online. It's not like theft doesn't happen, you know, and, and pe people do steal yeah, but music. You know, I but have like, not ever except for the high publicity profile cases um heard of anybody like especially in the indie world where an indie artist comes to see anybody that i've ever heard of in nashville and i was there living there for about 12 or 13 years but um, been involved with clients for 30 years and i've never heard anyone ever accuse anybody of stealing their their song it's always on a bigger bigger place like the robin thick uh suit mm. or Do the Olympus. george harrison um oh that's right a, a suit uh with um my sweet lord and things right. like that huey lewis uh and the news with versus the ghostbusters, ghostbusters too, yeah. you know uh, those are the ones that I've heard of. And I'm sure in publishing, there are, and by the way, we're going to get ready to get, it, to get into publishing on this site. And I'm going to, uh, that's probably the, one of the next places I want to move into. I'd still like to do some more artist stuff, but I, I'm getting ready to do a, an interview with a major music publisher in Nashville on Music Row who works for Curb and Word Music and um, uh, Curb Records and Word Records and uh he has been a long time kind of ally of mine and 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 publisher and so i'm going to get him on to ask him a bunch of questions and make sure people know and this will be one of them what about the people who ask is it safe to bring my song to nashville or to anywhere and show somebody and should they copyright it and he'll give an answer very similar to what we've been talking about to be honest with you <clears throat> yeah yeah well, okay, it's so, to, yeah it's you know go ahead yeah, I just think it's it's important to remember that like the world doesn't revolve around your your song, you and your song. You know, it's like it's there's so many songs floating around out there. Like I, I just think it's it's paranoid to, <laughs> to feel like and, and 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 one that goes along with this is should I sign my baby to a company that says they want it? And I find this this the funniest question of all is the people who all they do is they pay two or three hundred dollars to taxi and five dollars a shot to get their song sent out and get it and first of all get forwarded and then they rejoice over getting forwarded and then to get contacted which is even way more unlikely than getting forwarded and get contacted by a library and get a contract and then say should i sign this contract and their entire life has been focused on getting a contract for one of their songs well you know and they won't sign it because of some little thing that they're kind of like freaked out about well well it's it see well that would be more it would be more scary uh, to sign a contract if you had spent 10 years working on the song <laughs> <laughs> like I don't care what library it is. If you're if you worked for ten years on a track Probably. and then and then someone puts a contract in front of you, that's pretty scary. <laughs> but not as scary as you, if you if, made it the day the forward the taxi brief. That's was what due. I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. If you if you yeah exactly if you if you spent two three hours writing this track right before the deadline and then a con and then a contract shows up at your door, you're like ah oh, sure yeah take it. I can write ten more of those. No problem. It, well, here's an example. I, I paid for um, this. There was a site called pitchops.com. Have you ever seen that site before? It's no. kind of like a, 
a one-off taxi site where you could just find opportunities and pay $15 to pitch your song to an opportunity type of thing. It's just one of the many sites okay. like this. And I saw one that was saying uh, this company is looking for um, a, a songs to put into smooth jazz on Sirius Radio, which is, I know that Sirius Radio is a payer. In other words, you get a song on Sirius Radio. Oh, yeah. That's and money. That's, that's money. crazy. Uh, so, um, uh, that's royalties, money. man. That's royalties. That's crazy PR money. I've seen yeah. it from some of the jazz artists, I, a certain jazz artist I work with who's had yeah. that several times, and we're talking easy mid four figures, you know, payback. Type oh, I've, of stuff. I've, I've had that from, from, um, from satellite radio play, uh, because yep. yeah, we, um, we, the back like a few years ago, we paid a, a radio tracker, um, to, uh, to push our new, our, our album, um, onto radio and it made its way onto CBC radio three, which is, um, a satellite version of like the terrestrial radio station here in, um, in uh, well, CBC any, any Canadians listening know what CBC is um, but uh, the, it, yeah it made it through CBC Radio 3 it trickled its way into other um, uh, connecting satellite radio stations and we cleaned up on those PROs man that made us thousands and thousands of dollars and we we more than um, made up our, uh, you know, our n initial investment for hiring a radio tracker. That was a really good yeah. little. Because those can, little... that can be a good radio promoter can cost two grand or more. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, and <laughs> anyway, but uh, backing up from all that, um, I I I sent this thing out, and two years later, <laughs> I feel like we should like have a segue. <laughs> Two years later, <laughs> I get an email from a guy in Paris who says, I was forwarded your song. And it was that forward two years later, by the way. Damn. And they wanted to put it into all sorts of things in Europe and stuff like that. And it was a non-exclusive deal. So I could put it, and it's a jazz song. And, um, and I was like, okay. You know, I looked through the thing and, and the contract. And I didn't really think, at first I was like, ugh. It's a lot of work for one song, but I ended up doing it because you just never know. I mean, I never heard back from this $15, so maybe it'll re somehow make back my $15 for that op. But that yeah. just shows you that, uh, and I got a contract, and it was a little funky in some of its things, but non-exclusive. And, and again, and that's the next thing I want to say when people start to look at exclusive versus non-exclusive deals, and they go, all this is exclusive. Now I can never pitch my baby to anybody else. Um, well, start and, writing and, more music. And then they get into that whole, oh man, I, I don't, I, now this is exclusive. That means I can't do anything more with it. Yeah, and well, again, this is another form of preciousness. I all, think. The, all the TV and production libraries are, are exclusive, almost all of them. So it's like, I mean, you, yeah, I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't know that going going into you know some some of these pitches, uh, or writing for briefs and stuff like that for taxi. Like you should be well aware of that. But um, you know what I mean. But yeah, I think and they, they, I think their question is, what if someone else wants it later and it's gone? It's not available anymore. And I have to play this game all the time. I have non exclusive uh, radio, or I should say, sync agents that I know. And one guy especially that I work a lot with, and he has my catalog there. And he'll come back to me and say, hey, is this song available? And if I tell him it's in, it's, it, was, it was signed exclusively, he gets pissed off about it. He's like, why did you give up your publishing? Why did you give up your exclusivity? Why, you, know, you could get it used right now. But you mm -hmm. do that because you're in a great, big, huge library that's being searched every day, and you have you know, people at BMG actually pitching it to shows for you and stuff like that happening all the time. Yeah. And and he's got a point, but I've got a point. And they're both valid points. And, and there are people who are in sync who do not believe at all in libraries. They say, you need to be out hustling that song to an email, email list full of people who could use it today. And you need to keep your publishing and you need to keep this and you need to keep that. And, and both are right. 
And then there are people who say, no, libraries is the way, man. You can t throw tons of stuff in there, let it be exclusive, just write more. And just put more and more and put 1,000 songs in the libraries and then sit back and wait for the money to come in. Yeah. And that's th they're both right. They're, neither one is wrong. And right. I hope to do both of those. Yeah, well, there, I don't think there's any one magic way, you know? Like there's uh, yeah, the pitching to supervisors and the, and the email list. That's kind of an old school uh, way to do it. And it still works. It works for Tamara, Tamara Bubble. Yeah. Um, and then the library, you know, we've heard countless stories of people who are doing well after, you know, years of grinding it out on libraries, whether yeah. those are, um, whether those are exclusive TV and production music libraries or stock libraries, it's, you know, there's many different paths to, uh, to, you know, to finding success. So, um, we're going to yeah. get to the answer and you just mentioned it. We'll get to that in a minute, what the answer is. Uh, here's a, one more question that I have that I've heard before. What if I never write a song this good again? What if I don't write anything better than this? Mm -hmm. and, and that's a form of preciousness because you're so afraid that you're not gonna write anything better ever. And mm -hmm. that's, that's a fallacy that you need to just strike from your mind. If you could write this one, you can write another one. Absolutely. Um, even if you have to just use this one as a template and write another one just like it. Totally, you know, you can. totally, man. It's, I, yeah, I don't suffer from that. You know, I always, I, I always have some ah. faith in, you know, in, in that I'm gonna, get better and, and there's yeah. gonna there's a better song just around the corner oh, me um, too. I don't I never really get discouraged especially when I write a kind of a, a, a song that's lame I guess it's like you know maybe I don't know I don't know what percentage of songs I write that you know I put out them they're kind of like meh but that but maybe like one in ten is like really special you know like that ten percent yeah. of the output is just like really special you nailed it um, you just it just came together beautifully it also uh, comes from us having to create on demand and learning how to create good on demand instead of just create crap on demand you learn that you have to it has to be a certain quality and so when mm -hmm. you get to used when you get used to creating quality on demand um, you, you you get away from that can I ever do something good again? Because you're so used to just learning how. To. Now, it's not that to say that there aren't dry dry spells where you just feel don't feel like creating anything or you just don't have, you know. But all of us, all we have to do is grab an axe, whether it's this or one of those, and and just, you know, start. It's like I tell my students. I have students that look at the music and they put their hands on there. And you've probably have seen this too. And they're so concerned with getting in their fingers in the right position on the piano. Mm. And I'll say, press, <laughs> press yeah. it, yeah. press it down. Just go. And, and, Just do and, and that's the first thing I tell people when they say, I wish I knew how to play the piano. I'm like, have you ever seen a piano in real life before? And they say, yeah. I was like, have you ever put your hands on the keys and press down? They go, oh no. I'm like, well, that would be the first step. <laughs> In learning how to play piano is just pressing on <laughs> the thing, yeah. you know, and, uh, and, and you could, that's, that's the thing that I think some people, it's not preciousness so much. Maybe it's preciousness with, with making something gr good that they're so afraid they're going to make something average or bad. That they I, th don't even I think it goes try. back to what I was saying about, about allowing yourself to stumble and, and to, and to fail and to screw up and to suck. Yeah. You know, you have to allow yourself to do that. Yeah. Um, once you give yourself permission to, you know, to 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 do that, then you realize that it's it, that it never really ends. You're always kind of like stumbling around until uh, and doing the work, and then you extract that like ten percent. For me, it's like maybe ten percent of everything I do is like I really nailed it. You know. Yeah. So. Well, I and I think this this continues into the to the two types of. Of, of things, stock and, and sync music. In sync, I can understand preciousness there more than I can in stock. Um, and, and this is why I made That's a true. video called, you know, drawing the line between stock and sync and thinking, okay, this stuff is just gonna go into the pawn fives of the world and it's not that it's worse or better than the stuff I'm putting in sync. It's just made for YouTube videos. It's made for that use. And I'm just going to put it over there. And I think this is a bit of, this is a, if there's preciousness on my part, it's that decision. Where am I going to put it and, and be happy that I leave it there? You yeah. know, like, because even over the past year, I've, I've had things in my stock libraries that I, I said, I'm going to pitch this library. And it gets signed to an exclusive library. And I'm like, okay, um, 
I need to just figure out what the what the use is going to be when I make it. And and I think you could be precious about that decision. But once you make that decision, especially in stock, I don't want to hear. I I might have had a song in a library, and I made a, a, it paid ten cents, but I'm. I can't find it now and I'm concerned that that song is not in their library anymore and I may not get any more from that. Now, that's it's a little bit differently when you're talking about the massive change that Motion Array made, especially for people who are not named Stevie B or 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 Lester. But um, you know, uh it's it's been a massive change for a lot of people who are paying uh, important bills every month with that money uh, that we're making three and five hundred dollars that are now making fifty dollars right. that are now making that are not even being paid because they didn't make enough they didn't make up past fifty dollars mm -hmm. and um, that could be hundreds of downloads literally 200 downloads will still keep you in the fifty dollar range you know yeah and crazy. so um, and I bet you and I'm sure that wasn't the case four months ago. I bet 200 downloads made you way more than that uh, four or five months ago on yes. Motion Array. 100%. So um, I can see, but I think when you get into stock music, you besides things like Motion Array, which I can understand the hostility. I can't understand people who want to just take their stuff out now. And just, I'm never going to leave it in there anymore. You know, I can't understand that. Just leave it in. Um, and that's another form of preciousness. Well, if they're not going to pay me what's what I'm due, what they used to pay me, I'm going to take them out, and not, they're not going to have any of them. Well, you're also not going to make fifty to a hundred to two hundred dollars for what you used to make five hundred dollars for. Well, you it's, can it's, make that you know, choice. It's, that's everyone's right. You know, if they, if they feel like it they're is. being stiffed by uh, by a library, to, you know, take your music out and and see if you can find a better deal for it. There's nothing wrong with that. No, um, there's nothing wrong with it. I, it's, I think it's a, it's a form of preciousness, though, to me. You know, th my songs are so good. I can't. How dare you charge less for them and me? Because they did this when Audio right. Jungle changed their prices, when Pond Five changed their prices, and um, you know we're all lucky that it, that we can just put these up for free and make a penny. Even anything we put up, uh, of course, it's our time to put them up there. But still, it's free money. It's it's well, found money. You know, it's just yeah. I mean. <laughs> When you think about it, it's amazing that I can sit down here at my desk and like create, you know, this this track and make any money from it. It just it all feels like I live in this magic world. Um, if I <laughs> right. if I had to go and like you know uh, hire players like you know like in in a studio and spend a lot of money up front um, to to get a track done, then I would feel much more precious about it um, about where it lands because. Uh, yeah. But because the, the you know the actual inputs into creating the track are like quite minimal, like I can just kind of bang it out on my MIDI keyboard, yeah. um, that makes it so that you know uh, the the small amount of uh, compensation I, I I do get per track is like you know makes it it makes it worthwhile because I, I can get a track done really quickly. <clears throat> I've not I've not produced anything in the studio that is in stock. Pardon um, me. Oh yeah yeah yeah. I see what you're saying. I, and thing. I I would feel um, yeah like I wouldn't feel right about like putting any of my uh i don't know if I, I i wouldn't put my bands like music on like i a, put a few artists into motion array but they won't stay in there you know like for for calls when they, that they do right like for easter i'll probably put them up and then take them down you know because they were they were there specifically for that the problem with motion array now is i don't know how much i'm making per song or how many downloads per song each one is getting exactly so I can figure out the money to pay or split with whoever the that's, person is. That's a problem, yeah. I could do that yeah. last year. I can't do that this year. And I could like go into partnerships with people and say, hey, I think this song would do well on Motion Array, might make us 100 bucks a month, and we'll split that. I can't do that now because I don't know that information. Now, I saw yeah. something on their dashboard that says new. there's some new modifications coming to the dashboard soon. And they have gotten better. It, the dashboard has gotten better. Anyway, let's get back to a few more things uh, on this before we're done here. Um, perpetuity is another uh, wall people run into with their preciousness with their songs. When they run into a contract that says, not only is this going to be exclusive, but you are giving it to us for perpetuity. Forever. 
forever. This song cannot go out anywhere else. Now, even I think about that. I, 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 I'm not precious about it, but I have to think about it. I have to say, okay, am I okay with that? You know, and everything I do with VMG, by the way, is perpetuity. And everything I do with my other libraries, if those songs, they're not in perpetuity, they're only two or three year contracts, unless they get used. And if they get used in something, then they become per perpetual because the library goes, oh, this song, somebody wanted to use it. So it must be something we want to hold on to. So uh, I will, I will then uh, be in perpetuity with that. So I can mm -hmm. understand a bit of preciousness with this, but at the same time, what we're gonna talk about next is the thing, and that is what you said earlier, the, the key to being not so precious with your songs, or if someone steals your songs, or someone signs one of your babies, what's the key? Keep writing more, man. Write more music. This is yeah. a whole live I've got coming up uh, it's on my content calendar for, for a live. And that is, you need to write more music. You, I don't like to curse much on my channel, but you need to write more damn music. You just need to write more, you know? It's, it's that important. It's, it's, it, you need to get on it. Um, it, it. This can't be stressed enough, you know? This is the reason why you don't have to be so precious because you can write more, lots more. And I know people who are watching this who go, dude, I, I struggle to write one song a month. I understand. That's why you need to keep working on getting, writing more and getting faster. The more you write, write, piece, write pieces of something. Just what, start something new. Is why, is why I talk about um, you know, fi finding ways to expedite the process of, of writing music a lot. Um, it's not because you know, I think that uh, I just, I just think that there's a lot, there's a lot of obstacles that we put in, in our way towards like creating, uh, like, like a music. And I, I spent a lot of time, um, you know, tr eliminating, eliminating those obstacles. It used to, t yeah. When I started, you know, like take me back, you know, a few years ago, it used to take me like a, like a week uh, or two to like finish a track. And like, it was like, man, this is too long. I'm taking too long yeah. to do this. And I really dug into like, what are the reasons like let's let's get really scientific here like what are the what are the things that are stopping me um from getting this track done quickly one of them of course is like mental you know it's like uh, it's it's the being the precious that the, the, that you know the, just the the perfectionist mindset and another is more technical and uh you know like like finding ways to uh, speed up the, you know, like having a template, having save, you know, track settings, like having all your samples organized and stuff like the, all those things, like they really add up, you know? Um, so if, but, but like, you know, for me, it's like, I, I knew that in order for me to like, not feel uh, precious about putting these tracks onto libraries and such was going to require um, that I, I significantly speed up the process of writing a track, which is something I've spent a lot of time doing over over the last few years. And now I've got it to a point where I could I could put out a track very quickly. Um, and that is, is a matter of a lot of things. It's a matter of organization, but it's also um, just, uh, you know, the fact that I do it every day, all day, you know, of course, you just get better um, at yep. things as, as time goes on. Um, and so it's, it's a, it's a matter of committing to like some kind of regular practice schedule in a sense. Like I think of the DAW as like an instrument, you got to practice it, uh, regularly and, and, and hone your skills on it. So, um, but yeah, man, I mean like output and, uh, productivity is so integral to, to this whole game that we're playing. Uh, you need to be able to put out, um, material quickly and effectively, uh, so that you're not. Uh, you know, you're not freaking out about signing a, a contract in perpetuity with a library for music that you've you spent like you know the better part of a year uh, creating. It's just not it's just not a good place to be. It's like I would be, yep. you know, if I spent a you know like a like months and months working on a, a handful of tracks, I would be feeling I would be feeling pretty nervous about signing a contract in perpetuity as well. But if it I was a track, that. you know, absolutely, yeah. I think that's only natural to feel that way. And and maybe we. Can and to be fair, maybe we don't suffer from preciousness because we are we we cr we crank so much, 
and 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 people who are watching this video might feel like they're being attacked and i i I don't want them yeah to feel that way even though you know uh it because it is not only about quantity it's also about quality it it is and i was just i was just going to make the same point and it's like it's it's such a a weird thing because we talk about you know output and and being prolific uh, and and getting things done quickly and i i'm always worried that people will take that and or confuse that uh philosophy with uh a lack like we're trying to say like don't worry about the quality just get it out there but it's 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 a there's a there's a balancing act um because the quality is so important i'm always going to preach quality over quantity yep um but i'm just saying like what like you know just reiterate what i was saying earlier it's like you got to get quality dialed in but you got to be able to do it quickly um, yeah. I think, I mean, at least for me, that's how I'm able to kind of like function and get, you know, my work done. I mean, and this, and this is just, it goes beyond stock and sync too. It's like, you know, when the, when, uh, like I get a film project that I got to work on, it's like, they don't have like, you know, I have, to, I have deadlines on that too. They're not waiting around for months for me to finish work. They like, they sometimes expect like a, like a rough draft within like a week or two. Uh, for like a serious project, it's like I can't, I can't be, uh, you know, precious about that either. Yeah. You know, like I can't, I can't be screwing around uh, with their time because they're on deadlines. Everyone's on a deadline, so the whole, um, the whole trick of it for me is being able to just kind of like effectively uh, produce quality material within a within like a reasonable time frame. That's the that's the whole game. I tell you what, you can be precious about is time. And I don't mean your time making music. I mean your time. You can be precious with your daily time. What what time? What you do with your days? What yeah. do you do with your hours? What do you do? We have a whole podcast about how to find time to create. You know, we we and compose. We we did a whole podcast on this. You can find down below in one of the early episodes. But this is something I think that most time management is what. Prob- is the biggest problem that a lot of composers have and a lot of producers have, people who want to get into making music, working in music full-time, it, it, if, especially if you work another job and especially if you work another job and have a family yeah. or, a sp- or someone, a spouse or a significant other where you have to spend time with that person and you have to work a full-time job. But that all being said, there are still four or five hours in the day that you can find or, or that that you could probably quit watching so much television. You could probably quit staying up playing video games. You could probably quit uh, wait, sleeping until 10 a.m. in the morning if you don't have to get up. You could get up earlier. You could go to bed a little earlier and find what Dave calls the miracle mornings or whatever. Just, just going to say. <laughs> my miracle mornings can only start about <laughs> 7. And that's about as miracle as I get in the morning but that's still more than what it used to be where I used to sleep till 10 because I stayed up to three and I I did miracle early more I did miracle midnight you could say uh, miracle midnight to two or three but um, most of us most of us have can carve out a bit of extra time there are yeah. some people that are legitimately uh, absolutely swamped for good reasons and uh, we salute yeah. you uh, and, and realize that like life is is crazy busy and and hectic for some people in ways that I can't even understand yet. Or um, we have friends who are in war torn countries and things like exactly. that. And there's 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 exactly. different uh, there's different, different circumstances for yeah. everyone out there. And and, uh, and we, in we're, general, we're I feel extremely privileged. So I don't want to come across like Absolutely. where you know like uh, hey you guys can all you know do the exact same yep. thing I'm doing. I have all mm-hmm. sorts of privileges here that uh, I'm I'm grateful for. Same. Um, but I feel as though, like uh, in general, like uh, uh, most people, including myself, could could find ways to carve out a little bit of extra time. Um, and uh, you know, we all have our, our our bad habits. You know, like I stayed up probably too late last night um, playing VR ping pong. I didn't need to, <laughs> and I didn't have a, I didn't really have much of a miracle morning uh, today. I woke up an hour <laughs> or two before we had to start talking, and I'm still I've sipping been my taking coffee. this medication that. <laughs> that it has pushed me about an extra hour of sleep a day and it and it makes me go to bed a little later so i've been watching a little too much punisher on disney channel lately <laughs> okay. but uh i i or watching youtube videos you know and yeah. stuff but uh i 
I prefer to to go to go to go to bed at twelve and wake up at seven and get that time. And then, if nothing else, at seven, I'm not creating music at seven a.m. But I am waking up and planning. I'm sitting over there or out there and on my iPad planning the day or planning new songs or planning tracking sessions or planning what I'm going to submit to this library next or planning what I need to get done for you know, my stock libraries or whatever and really taking that time and being precious about my time and being precious about my activities, being precious about uh, with a list of things I need to get done. Lists can help you not be as, uh, you need to be precious about time and lists can help you with that. Uh, so any kind of list. I use a free app now. I used to use Evernote. Now I've gotten into the Mac just notes app. It's very strong now. And I just use that. I'm looking at it right now. It's my list for this podcast right here. I, right. I made this list earlier. Well, you, and you're right. You're right to say that time is the one thing that we should be more precious about because it's the most valuable you know, commodity that we, that if we, if I had time travel, I would rule the world, literally the music world, literally. Yeah. Oh, wouldn't we all? <laughs> yeah. So, well, I think that is quite a lot on this subject. Um, and I hope this has been helpful for you to kind of see what to be precious about and what not to be precious about. I know everybody watching this is at a diff or listening to this is at a different point in where you are with your career. And if you are being precious with things, it's okay. It, we're not we're not mad at you. Yeah, but, we don't we don't we're not judging because we we've I've I've definitely been there. I've definitely been there. I was too. Yeah. I remember a time when I I was I was scared to send show my songs to people because I wasn't right. sure if I had to get them copyrighted. Everybody has to go through those same things. I had to go through it and everybody does. And so um but as I wrote more songs, as I had more experience, and as my experience level grew and my work grew, I started to lose those things. And you will too if yours, if you continue down these paths. You watch these videos. You start to submit things to, to Steve's Academy or, or you start to show them online and live videos and things like that. Uh, yeah, you're going to get there too. You're going to get there too. It's just going to take a while. Yeah. Sometimes. And we all have to have experience and we all have to just go through it. We have to have that first time that we talk to somebody in the business. We have to have that first um, acceptance into a library. We have to have that first. Uh, I just heard today from one of the guys I coached a, a little while ago and has been part of our, uh, our, our discord and everything that he got into Motion Array this week. Nice. So that's great. Uh, it, and, and, you know, he he waited forever and, and, and got in. So that's exciting. And those those victories are 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 awesome. Yeah, totally. they're awesome for all of us. I would love know? to. I love to hear that. I love to hear that. Yeah. So anyway, well, that's all I have to say on this. Um, we're next week. We'll be back here. Same same time, same channel. <laughs> uh, what we'll be talking about, we don't even know yet. So. Uh, just uh, try this week to think about what we've said about about your preciousness with your stuff, but especially your preciousness with your time. Take time, and, and take time by the horns, and and find your time to be creative. And I think that's uh, that's the most important thing, and to make your music. Absolutely, yeah, I agreed. All right. Well, thanks everybody for watching and for listening, and wherever you are in the world, we thank you for what you're doing and supporting us on our podcast just by listening and watching you're supporting us and if you have if you really want to get into some production type things go see steve's production music academy you can find links in the description below of the podcast or the video and if you would like some one-on-one -on -one coaching or you want to be part of our music licensing mastermind at make music income you can find that in the information below as well so thanks so much for listening and watching, and we'll see you next time. See you guys soon.